the back scratchers oh, on that thing. That's a booner right there. Oh. That's a booner. He's not white though. But my God. The caribou migration, the most incredible sight I've ever seen. And we're going to see it firsthand today on Steel's Reel in the Outdoors. Just beautiful. <laughs> As crazy as this might sound, I've got this, this weird quest going on. I've got it in my head that I can kill all 28 North American animals with a bow and arrow. And caribou, they're one of those 28. And when I had a chance to go to Northern Quebec, up near Hudson Bay, above the Arctic Circle, and hunt with Sealac Adventures, I was on an airplane. The beginning of this hunting adventure starts just getting there. You fly a commercial airline to Montreal, you spend the night, you get up the next morning, they put you on a charter. Now, when you think about a charter plane, what do you think, 10 or 12 seats? No, man, this is a 727, big giant charter flight that flies you from Montreal to a Inuit town called Kujuat. Now, what do you think flying time is when you're heading north? 45 minutes, an hour? 727 for two and a half hours, 1,200 miles north. I mean, we're just south of Greenland when we land, and you hit Kujuat. So you get off the plane in Kujuat, you get your gear, they put you on a bus, and they take you about five minutes away to a big lake where you get on a single or twin otter airplane, and they fly you into the tundra, 30, 40, 45 minutes into the tundra, and you're in the middle of nowhere. The whole time we're flying, I'm looking out, there's not a road, there's not a fence, there's not a house, there's just flat tundra and water as far as the eye can see. Incredible. Now I've flown into some remote places and when I landed I'm thinking, you know what, this is probably the farthest away from civilization I have ever been in my whole life. You're one step away from being on the moon, literally. And when we landed, the float plane taxis up to this camp, and I was blown away. We have a, I mean, it's like a little city, the most up-to-date, incredible camp that I've ever stayed in. I'm talking about heated Quonset huts, full kitchen, flushed, yep, flush toilets, hot showers, the whole nine yards out in the middle of nowhere. It's incredible. The one unique thing about Sealac Adventures and, and, and Mark Ballard, who's the owner-operator, is the fact that, that Mark is always in camp. A lot of these big caribou operations, you know, the owner sits back here in the big city and he's got everybody else doing the job for him. Mark's a hands-on guy. And when I got off the plane, he was helping carry gear in and introducing me to the cook and the whole nine yards. And, and it, it was pretty late. We really didn't have time to, to, to make a, a push into the uh, tundra to, to go hunting. But Mark said, hey man, why don't we uh, just jump in the boat and I'll show you around a little bit. We'll shoot a little footage. And along the way, I got to hear a little bit about his operation. I thought that was kind of neat. Here at Sea Lake, we love bow hunting. It's, uh, it's in our genes. A lot of bow hunters that come here. Uh, it's a great adventure for bow hunters. It's a, it's a thrill to be able to see so far and make a spot and stock on an animal and, or just wait for it to come close to you and decide which one you want to fling an arrow at. Uh, we got, I would say, right through the season, we got with a reasonable distance. Uh, everybody just loves that hunt. It uh, gives you the opportunity to, to shoot on a bull or to re, you know, to harvest a bull, maybe three or four shot opportunity a day, that which you never get into any other species, basically. Now I was hunting with my friend Jamin Krebs, or at least I was supposed to be, and we were going to switch off camera duties. But when he got delayed coming out of Spokane, they said he's going to be a day late. I told Mark, I said, you know what? This is a six-day hunt, brother, and I'm going to hunt every single day. So I put the camera in his hands, and we went hunting. It's the first day. I'm going to wait for a big one. 25 yards. 
That's a big old bull. Yeah. 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 This is a total adrenaline rush. I mean, it's, there's caribou everywhere. There, there, there are ones on the left and ones on the right, and they're telling me not to shoot that one and don't shoot this one. And then this great caribou just about runs over us. The thing is, is they come so fast, you, you, you have to lead them. And I, I, didn't, I didn't know if it'd be like a deer. I might be able to grunt at it, make it stop, but I just figured I'd lead it a little bit. And I aimed right about the front of the chest, and it was going so fast, I hit just a little bit back, but it got good penetration, looks like a double lung hit. I, I got another caribou to go, but regardless, this trip has already been amazing right now. It's just, it's outlasted my expectations a hundred times. It's more, there's a lot of it. Yeah, there's more blood, so I think it should be down real He went right through this area right here. Hey, look, 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 look. Look right there. Ooh. There he is. Where'd he go, Joey? <laughs> Oh man, my first caribou. I'm stoked. I can't wait to put my hands on this sucker. Way to go, Joe. Great shot. You better go touch your first. I heard that. I heard that. Because I have already touched 10,000. This guy right here, I'll tell you something. This guy right here, he literally has touched about 10,000 caribou. Mark put me with this, with him and he said, this is the man, this guy will put you on a big caribou. And, and I, we've seen so many this morning. And I can hope you can skin as good as you can, as you good as you can put a hunter in place. I promise you that. <laughs> I'll do my best. Okay. Oh man, this is so cool. I'm in the tundra. I'm a gazillion miles away, a, a zillion miles away from everything. And we're in the heart of the, t of the migration. These caribou are just starting and, and they're in velvet. I always want to kill a big velvet caribou. And I think, I think I got her done, man. That is so cool. Oh, just a little bit back, like I said, but, but look at this. Check him out. <laughs> look at this thing. Oh my God. Nice one, Mark. Look at him. Look at him. Look at this thing. Oh my God. I want to tell you. When you're a kid, when you're a kid and you're reading these magazines, you dream about this stuff. And I get, I've been getting to do it. And and this reel in the outdoors, this show has been so awesome. We've gone, we've, we've done so many cool things. And I think this, without a doubt, ranks right up there. Man, I got, I got to put out much love to Mark Ballard and Sea Lack Adventures. This this whole experience is just absolutely incredible. And uh, if I got a breath, I'm gonna keep hunting these suckers. I promise you that. Awesome. Look at him. Look at him. Look at that. <laughs> Give me five there, brother. Look at that. That's awesome. That is just awesome. Unbelievable. 
So, so cool. Nice shot, yo. That, it really wasn't a bad shot for as fast as he was going. <sighs> oh. Yes! <laughs> if my hunt had ended right then, I would have been ecstatic. But you know what? In, in, in these hunts, in these northern Quebec hunts, you can harvest two caribou. So I was only half done. And, and Jamin was coming in the next day. I figured, you know what? We'll give old Jamin a chance tomorrow. But well, we waited and waited and waited. And finally, at two o'clock the next day, Jamin's float plane arrived. And, and I've got this big caribou bull set of horns there and he's checking him out and he can't he can't get his gear on fast enough and, and we get all set up and Mark grabs the boat and, and with our guide Phil and we head we head down the lake and went hunting and I, I told him I said there's caribou everywhere. I mean yeah. we're in the heart of the migration and it's getting thicker all the time. And when we stepped out of the boat it wasn't five minutes we had a big bull right on top of us. I mean, we climbed out of the boat, go up through this little crack in the rocks, and look to our right, and there's this giant bull standing there. And, and I'm running a camera, and it, for me, it's super exciting to run the camera. I mean, yeah, I love to hunt, but man, that, that's like second best. And I had what I thought was a perfect shot, but, but for whatever reason, Jamin didn't really have a good angle. And the whole time, I'm waiting to see the arrow go into the bull until he's literally out of sight and out of range, and it didn't happen. And it was exciting. I mean. I would, I think I'd go up there and just run the camera. That's how much fun it was. But we decided to just kind of, kind of trudge on, slipped up over the rise, glassed around, and here comes another bull. But this time, he doesn't have a clue or anywhere around. He's got his head down and he's feeding. What do you think, Mark? What do you think? I don't know if that would be considered discipline or stupidity. Uh, I know Jamin's hunted a lot and he's done a lot of things, but this is caribou. One day you've got 10,000 caribou around you, the next day you're looking at moonscape with nothing. That migration can shut off like that. But he said, hey man, I want a bigger bull. I said, hey, tomorrow we'll hunt a bigger bull. So we're two days into the hunt. I've got a great bull on the ground. Jamin's already passed on a good bull. And I'm thinking it can't get any better until I walked out the front of my cabin right at daylight. And there are caribou swimming the lake in front of our camp, just like, just like ducks. They're everywhere. The migration is, is happening and we are right in the middle of it. There's caribou swimming the lake. There's caribou behind the camp. This place is, this is caribou central right here, is where they've gotten this. I mean, this place is absolutely amazing. It's, you know, it's one thing to wake up, and it's, it's beautiful out, but when you got critters running around everywhere, I'm like, let's just go get my bow, let's, let's get this thing done. These guys are talking about, let's eat breakfast, and I'm like, no, 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 no. Let's get in the boat, and let's go hunting. So I grab Mark and our guide, Phil, and we jump in the boat, 
and we head up the lake and it's it's like heading into you talk about a target rich environment it's like heading into indian country i feel like custer and, and, and the Indians were on the horizon. They were everywhere. I figured after seeing what I was seeing, the hardest thing was gonna be to pick a big one and stay with him. When you got that many animals mixing in, it is really, really hard to focus. So I'm on camera again and Jamin's, Jamin's got his bow and I'm not a caribou guide, but I can see from about three quarters of a mile away where they're crossing the river. The, the river feeds into this little lake that we're on and they are coming across one after another after another. And they do that, it's like a scent trailing thing. And I said, you know what? I think that might be a pretty good place to hide. So we, we make a trip up and around and come in on a cut that's right above the river where they're going across. And you know, Jamin's a, a pretty savvy guy. He's, he's guided tons of hunters, he's done a lot of things. But to see the way he reacted when Hundreds and hundreds of caribou were coming across that river and he knew he had to put an arrow in one was worth the there price of admission. The, 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 they're coming. Oh my god. I gotta settle down. Let's go a close shot, dude. Okay. I see the bull I want. choice that is the most intense that's the most intense moment ever I've ever had in bow hunting history right there try to make a choice out of 20 big bulls and 10 go by 20 go by and you're like that's the one you should be dead it's a good one when you're hunting the tundra, you're hunting around a lot of water, and there's always the chance that your animal will expire in the water. Whether it's a river or a lake, it doesn't matter because there's only one way to get them. Enter Jamin Krebs, former member of the village people. Oh, man, I am telling you what. I am froze. It took us a couple hours to pack out Jamie's caribou, but after that, I'm looking around, I'm saying, you know what, the migration is on, and remember what I said, it could stop tomorrow? So I grabbed the guys and I said, we're going back to the river crossing. I mean, you could still see them crossing. And I said, we're gonna set up in the same cut, and we'll try and ambush us a monster bull. The one to the right. That's the one? Is that the one? Oh, 
sure. Just coming out of the boat, just coming out of the water. Right there. Well, you just right there. See, you can see the difference on that boat. Yeah, he's the one on the right. Come on. so fast you gotta lead them <laughs> that's hunting buddy I want to tell you that is hunting you guys need to get out of your tree stands and you need to come to the tundra because this is awesome over the top look at this bull look at him mark look at this bull wow oh god Double shovels, this is like everything everything a bow hunter could ever ask for. Man, you know, I could kiss you on the lips, but I won't. I know, I won't either. Look at that. <laughs> pull him around there, Look Phil. This. Pull him around there. Actually, we want to, let's pull him. Look let's pull him around this way, pull him around this way. Oh, wow. Yeah, look at him. Look. Oh, look at him. I, 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 you know, you get there's a, there's a time in hunting where you just, you're just like, you're speechless and, and you try and put it into words and play show host. Or sometimes we just gotta be like a kid and just gotta appreciate what this animal God made. It's amazing. And Sea Lack Adventures, Mark Ballard, Phil, the rest of his crew, I mean, they work their tails off and they, there's caribou everywhere. This place, this place is like a once in a lifetime experience. You need to, to try and come and experience this thing. It's incredible. And if you haven't enjoyed this show, I've said it before, you do not have a pulse. I'm Joe Thomas, and I'll catch you next week on Steel's Reel in the Outdoors. I'm in love. I'm in love, man. Look at that.